when you first had your 1,000 bottles produced, uh, what went through your mind at that point when you first saw them? I said, oh my God, what I'm doing now? <laughs> I have 1,000 bottles sitting in my little apartment, you know, in Los Angeles. And I had spent all my money, I borrowed money from a very good friend of mine. Um, he actually came to me and I told him about this, you know, to create this fragrance. He said, you know what, Gare, I believe in you. Here is some money, you can pay me tomorrow in 20 years. I don't care, I know you will be successful. And for him saying that and believing in me, yeah. I have to make this happen. So I'm sitting home with 1,000 bottles and I know that I have to start to sell this, otherwise I will be on the street, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, it was really overwhelming also. And I, I don't think I realized at that time how hard it is to be able to be successful, you know, and making money, a living out of this. Um, what I had to do at that time, I had to contact, you know, department stores. And of course, nobody called you back. Then it was like, sure. Gear, who are you, you know? So I had to come up with a smart idea, and that's what I did. And what was that idea? That idea was that I had to use myself as a selling tool because I have no money, no advertisement money. So I have to create something out of myself from basically nothing. So I called up a lot of department stores and uh, Nordstrom department stores I knew because I've been working with them from the other lines. And I remember Nordstrom was a store that was into service, specialty brands and, and, and the whole you know niche. So I called them up and the buyer was very nice and she said to me, well, we can have a meeting with you. So I met with her and she said to me, Gear, I love your fragrance, it's a great scent, but you have no money, there's no way you will be successful. So I said to her, why don't you take in some bottles and see how much I can sell. And if I don't sell, I will, you can, I will take them all back. And she goes, okay. So you ordered 100 bottles in one store to see how much I will sell in three months. How long did it take you, though, to convince them to buy those 100 bottles? That took probably, I would say, around five, six months mm -hmm. to even get a meeting. <laughs> oh, and, you know, I'm coming there and uh, they knew nothing about really the business, you mm -hmm. know, how to do it more than uh, learning from being, you know, um, a fragrance, um, you know, salesperson for different other lines. Mm -hmm. So what I did actually, I um, went to this garage sale to buy a suit because I didn't have a suit. I got this a suit for $5 and at the garage sale, there was a red carpet laying there. So I had something in my mind. I said, okay, can I get this red carpet with this? I said, sure. I got this red carpet. I called up a friend of mine. He's a photographer in LA but also very broke, so he didn't have a film in his camera. I said, come down anyway, pretend that you have film and take a picture of me. So before the store opened, we had this red carpet laying there. I had, you know, my headshots from my acting, and we displayed very nicely, and he's gonna take picture with me and stage me around. So when this, this door opened, he started to do all these pictures that stay over there, do this, you know. Mm -hmm. And people started to line up. This was in Beverly Hills, and of course, everybody's into, you know, celebrity and what's going on, so people started to line up. And had this huge line next to me, mm -hmm. and I never forget this. This one woman come over to me with huge diamonds on her fingers. You know, she can barely lift her fingers, and she goes, "Darling, I love your suit. That must be from Europe." And I bought it. <laughs> but I smiled, mm -hmm, you know, and continue. Mm -hmm. And while I was doing this, you know, we started to sell a lot of bottles. Was was sold, and um, while I was doing the promotion, signing bottles and my headshots, you know, and making me look like a big star, I felt something biting on my back, and I said, mm -hmm. "God, what is this?" I just continue doing it and in an hour we sold out all the bottles mm -hmm. we got like 50 people on a waiting list something like that I drove home uh, to my little place I came into my apartment I took my suit off and I was bleeding on my back oh. and the suit that I bought had fleece in it because I couldn't afford Ooh. to dry clean my suit that's mm -hmm. how was. so it was very glamorous you know uh -huh. so that's was 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 inside my suit and that's what was bothering me so it was a really fun opening of mm -hmm. my uh, of my fragrance line There's no way you can be successful if you do the normal thing about how the weekends off and work from nine to five and all that. You, you just have to want it and believe in yourself and not listen to other people telling you you can't do it, it's too hard, it's too this, it's too that. And people do that all the time, you know. And uh, I really speak for myself for experience with this because I remember in the beginning I, it was so easy for me to just go the other way and say you know what I just wait a little bit next day or next morning or you know I'm tired now I this you just can't do that you, do, you can allow yourself to do that you just have to be committed and it proves that you can do it if you have a dream and if you really want to do it you can do it but it takes a lot of work and 
and don't never give up. I mean, don't think that, okay, you know, I tried now for two, three months and I can't do it because all of a sudden things happen and you will, you, you will make it happen for yourself. I have learned so much about myself uh, that I was able to, to do this, I show for myself that um, I probably hopefully can do other things too that I wanted to do. And um, I learned about people too, how people are in, in the world, you know, uh, good and bad. Mm -hmm. And uh, also that you can be able to change people with um, what you have. Meaning that I used to work for handicapped children before also a long time ago in Norway. And doing that, I learned that it's so little that you need to do to make people happy, you know. I had um, women coming to me and thanking me for this fragrance that I named after my mom and all that. Mm -hmm. I give um, women hand massages and it's one woman, she was in her late 70s, said to me, you are the first man that touched me since my husband died 10 years ago. <laughs> Things like that, that mm -hmm. you think it means nothing, but sure. for some people it means a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. And just for me to be able to make a difference for, for some people, even with a fragrance that you will think that it's not, a fragrance is not necessary to live, mm -hmm. but it, it does something to people, you know. You're meeting people, you respect people, you talk to people, and, and that connection actually have been helping me as a person to understand people more than I did before I started. What would you consider to be the main ingredients necessary for a person to succeed today? It's, of course, believing in yourself, you know, and um, I mean, I, I know I say that all the time, but it's so important, you know, I mean, if you don't really believe you can do it and think you maybe, maybe cannot, then you cannot do it. You have to believe in yourself and you have to have somebody with you also that you can trust, you know, that's important. Like, I was so lucky to have some very good friends you know that was there for me and of course my family and I know that a lot of people don't have a family or you know so but I was looking that way but you try to find somebody with you that you can trust that is has a good energy with you that yeah. can push you a little bit you know because you need that little push also to be to be able to do it but number one is yourself nobody mm -hmm. can do it better than you 